We distinguish between rhinosinusitis, pharyngitis, and other acute respiratory illnesses. Now, let's list the likely causative pathogens for rhinosinusitis and pharyngitis, including susceptibility profiles and patient risk factors for multidrug resistant pathogens. Now, majority of cases of uh, rhinosinusitis are due to viral um, causes. So acute viral rhinosinusitis is, is due to various uh, viruses, which we typically don't treat, uh, you know, with the exception of influenza. Uh, for, for most patients. Now, a small portion of these, uh, about 2% of adult cases are bacterial rhinosinusitis, and these are due to respiratory uh, bacteria, so respiratory pathogens. So then, uh, you know, the top of the list is streptococcus pneumoniae. Uh, there's also Haemophilus influenzae, streptococcus pyogenes, and Moraxella cateralis. So if you, we are to treat acute bacterial rhinositis, these are the four organisms that we want to target. So we want to make sure we have agents that work uh, well against these. Now, uh, potentially Staphylococcus aureus could cause uh, rhinosinusitis. However, it's rare and MRSA coverage is not recommended. So we do not want to cover empirically for MRSA. Now for acute pharyngitis, of course, it could be due to uh, different uh, causes, mostly due to viruses, but also occasionally some other bacteria um, will cause pharyngitis. Um, the IDSA guidelines are specifically for streptococcus pyogenes uh, or group A strep uh, pharyngitis. And, you know, we, the way we diagnose it is that, the uh, you know, we do a, uh, we do a throat swab and if the patient tests positive for strep pyogenes, that's when we treat it. So the treatment is primarily targeted at streptococcus pyogenes. Now, since we are talking about uh, streptococcus for the most part, especially for rhinosinusitis, is strep pneumo. So we should keep in mind risk factors for drug-resistant strep pneumo. For the most part, these are similar to the risk factors for drug-resistant strep pneumo from the uh, IDSA guidelines for community acquired pneumonia. Uh, the 2012 guidelines are more recent, so their uh, risk factors have been updated, so they're slightly different than what the uh, community acquired pneumonia guidelines had. So, age uh, over 65 still remains uh, a risk factor. Uh, recent hospitalization, uh, meaning the previous five days, is also a risk factor for drug resistant strep uh, pneumo. Uh, so, is antibiotic use in the last uh, month? Uh, people from geographic regions where there is a more than 10% risk of uh, penicillin non-susceptible strep pneumo, uh, people with severe infections, and you know the way you decide if an infection is severe if someone has a high fever of 39 degrees centigrade or higher, uh, or if there is a threat of uh, suppurative complications and ex exposure to ch uh, children in daycare center and of course immunosuppressed uh, patients. So these patients um, will be at risk of drug resistant uh, strep pneumo so that we should keep that in mind uh, when we uh, choose treatment for rhinos uh, for ba acute bacterial rhinosinusitis for these patients. So uh, when it comes to, you know, so if someone does not have risk factor for drug resistant strep pneumo, you can use, uh, um, you know, drugs that have activity for strep pneumo. So basically all of these agents with the exception of ciprofloxacin. So ciprofloxacin is not good for uh, any streptococcus pneumonia. So it's, that's why it's not a respiratory fluoroquinolone. So should, that should not be used. Pretty much any other uh, agent that's listed here is good for strep pneumo in the absence of risk factor for drug resistant strep pneumo. If there is risk factor for drug resistant strep pneumo, penicillin and amoxicillin will luckily be uh, uh, not working. Uh, one thing that we can do with amoxicillin, if you use a higher dose of amoxicillin, it could overcome that resistance. So if you know we use a higher, the same is true with amoxicillin clavulinate. So if you use a higher dose of it, you can actually overcome uh, they're resistant from strep pneumo. But pretty much uh, first, second, and third generation oral cephalo cephalosporins uh, do not have good activity against drug-resistant strep pneumo. The same with uh, trimethoperm sulfamethoxazole is not good against uh, drug-resistant strep pneumo. And as if macrolides, macrolides, and tetracyclines also do not have good activity against drug-resistant strep pneumo.
Now for uh, rhinosinusitis, we should also keep in mind that the uh, Haemophilus influenzae and Moraxilla catarralis can also cause these. And uh, when it comes to that, you know, if you suspect these, then um, amoxicillin clavulinate will be the best option because these two organisms are likely to produce uh, beta, -lactam beta lactamases. So the, that beta lactamase will break down penicillin, the beta lactamase will break down amoxicillin, but clavulinate will block, or I should say, inhibit. Uh, beta lactamase. So, therefore, even though these organs are likely to make beta lactamases, um, clavulinate will inhibit it. So, amoxicillin and clavulinate will have activity against it. Now, those beta lactamases will also break down first generation uh, cephalosporins, but second and third generation cephalosporins are stable against those beta lactamases. So, second and third generation will actually have good activity. Uh, Trim, trim sulfa, trimetropyrim sulfa metaxol is not does not have reliable activity against Haemophilus influenzae, so we should keep that in mind. Clindamycin doesn't have activity against any gram negatives, so we should uh, keep that in mind. And when it comes to atypical coverage, you should uh, note that only fluoroquinolones, macrolides, and tetracyclines have activity against atypicals; the rest of them do not.